Hello, hello, beautiful people, mi gente bella. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Santana Says, where we talk about everything from Roblox to relationships, everything in between, and the overall journey of life. I am excited, as always, to bring you another edition of the show, uh, but also when we get to have an intimate conversation, because I know I'm always bringing my guests and having all these series and all these great things. So I love that we just wrapped our Hispanic Heritage Month series. Hispanic Heritage Month is coming to a close, but as you all heard on the show that does not mean that the conversations about la herencia hispana stop that does not mean that issues around the latina community stop it just means that that series is wrapping up at least for now the other thing is that october there's still a lot of things that have happened in october that take place here so i want to make sure that we talk about that and you know we will get into that very shortly but i actually wanted to recap for y'all because there i made mention of a couple of events that i had attended and that I had drew a lot of either inspiration from or just, you know, really enjoyed. And I really wanted you all to know what they were. So I'm going to actually start off with in September. So September 14th through the 16th, I actually went to the Women Evolve Conference, which took place in Texas. And so for those who don't know, this was put on by the incredible Sarah Jakes Roberts. I am super fan. And so it did take place there. That was an event that where she drew together around 40,000 women that came from all over the country and literally to be able to have conversations amongst women, for women, by women, it was an incredible thing to see. However, there wasn't just women there. So there was a point in time during one of the workshops where men actually came and had an opportunity to share messages to women. It was interesting because even Sarah, as she's introducing this segment, felt like, I'm not sure. Like, should we have men be a part of an event that's strictly for women? Like, should we really have them there? Do women want to hear from men at a women's conference? Like, should that even take place? I'm glad that she decided to have them come because, one, they did have incredibly encouraging messages. I had never heard Devon Franklin speak. Honestly, I'm like many. I kind of learned more about him when he was with Megan Good. So I didn't really know, you know, too much about, like, what all he had to offer and all those things. So he definitely shared some incredible insight on relationships and things like that. And here's the thing. I'm glad that she acknowledged, just like I want to, that a lot of women, a lot of her trauma have come from different places. Some of it has been by fellow women, but some of it has also been at the hands of men. And so that's why she was sensitive to the fact that if we're going to invite men into the space, that what we should hear from them should be something that's going to be encouraging and build them back up, not something that's going to make them feel worse. There was a little bit of mansplaining that did take place. However, overall, the message was definitely encouraging. And so I'm glad that we were able to have that. And to be honest, I just feel like for those who are going to go into a relationship that want to evolve, because that's what I love about Women Evolve, it's all about the evolution. If we are going to do that and go on to new heights, honestly, I want to hear, you know, the opinion of not just fellow women, but also men of how we should do that. And so I like that we were able to have that kind of constructive conversation and that that all could happen. But speaking of men, there were two men in particular that I have to shout out that were there that made the conference even more heartwarming. So her father, of course, is T.D. Jakes, for those who don't know. So he already is like an incredible powerhouse in and of himself. Like the man, he's he's been a legend. Like a lot of people know him for those who follow him religiously and, all, and what have you. He came and he made sure to also give a gift to Sarah to let her know he had already passed the torch to her not too long before this conference. But he was there and he also made mention her husband also actually closed out the entire conference and had like a whole sermon in and of himself. I had never heard him preach. He did his thing, all that. There were a couple moments during where not just where they spoke in front of everyone, but where they showed up as supportive members to Sarah. One was when Sarah actually started off the conference. This is also why I relate so much to her. I just see myself in her. I love her. Is that she is somebody that she drew together 40,000 women. Okay. So like period, we obviously love this woman. We'll go wherever she tells us, you know, like we want to be a part of whatever she got going on. She has that kind of like welcoming personality. You want to be in the room. You want to hear from her. But she was so nervous that before the conference actually started, she almost did not come out. So she has all these people here, you know, like everybody waiting for her. Like you would think that that's like validation enough. But sure enough, she still was so nervous that she almost didn't come out. Her father actually had to pray with her in the back before she was even able to come out. And I think it's just an incredible testament, not only to their relationship, but that even when you have have these incredible opportunities that you can do and all these people showing you that you can that there's always that doubt that can still creep in even in your like strongest moments and it was great that she was able to have him there but he wasn't it wasn't just that he was there 
for him, but he was there to remind her of herself and the strengths that she had and that this was definitely a blessed opportunity that she was meant to have. So that was amazing. But also I remember seeing that, and actually my friend made sure she showed me the clip, that there was a moment too where Sarah gave her opening message. It was incredible. She told us all to get information. I was like, girl, you got me wanting to do whatever. Like I'm about to take over the whole world based on what you shared. But she still, as soon as she was done, she ran to the back and her husband was standing right there as he always is like being super supportive and she literally like collapsed into that man's arms you know what i'm saying like the way he hugged her after it was done y'all that's what i'm talking about so like if anybody needs a depiction of the love that i would like to have in my life it needs to look like that you know what i mean like that that's the standard i need to be at least that or more you know what I mean? but but nothing less it was the most incredible supportive atmosphere in there and when he even gave his message he was saying that it's not it does not take away from men to support women and it was like an incredible thing to hear because i feel like that's what we need to do i love when we say like stand behind your man and do whatever you can but also men it's not a bad thing to stand behind your woman because it literally only made them shine more together and so it was just an incredible thing to see I was so glad that I was in the room and I loved it you know so I'm still you know I'm still singing all the praises after that the other event though was once I got back to Cleveland and was feeling all the energy, feeling all, you know, great about things. We actually had Future Land, which was an incredible event. Also, for those who don't know, in Cleveland, it was all about the future of tech, future of businesses taking place in Cleveland. It lets you know about all these uh, great things to come. And Cleveland is definitely on the rise. If y'all haven't been following, like, you probably should. <laughs> because there's a lot of things that have been happening here and that are continuing to happen. So Future Land absolutely speaks to that. I did not get the opportunity. I went to Future Land last year. I heard about, you know, a lot of it this year, but as usual, it was just another incredible testament to Cleveland. And I can tell you from the time that I've gone and even from this year, all the entrepreneurs and great people that were in those rooms, like y'all, I can't speak enough to the magic that literally gets produced in our city by people here and by people that get brought to it. So it's literally, like I said, magnetic. It's, uh, it, it is incredible, and for those who haven't had a chance, I definitely encourage you. Last year, I actually got to hear from two guests that were on the show. So I went to Futureland last year thanks to Tanisha Velez, who uh, was on our show before, and Andre Tisha uh, Fitzgerald. They both showcased their businesses. These are women that were telling all about you know, what they did, and so I definitely went last year to support them but they have still been on the rise talking about all those things. And then speaking of powerhouses, another person that graced our beautiful stage was Pierre Heard. She was in episode three, if y'all recall, she was talking about millennial mommying and how she has this great platform and all these things she did. That girl, um, for y'all, now that y'all know, has blown up. Actually, a lot of people have actually done incredible things after being on the show. So like literally they're gonna have to come back for follow-ups. Also, I don't wanna give full credit and be like, that's the Santana Says Effect, but hey, I, they have been doing great things, including my sister. I, don't, I think I had made mention that she came on and she was telling us about her aspirations. She has now started her own business as well. So I'm just loving the fact that we are talking about things on the show and then people are literally out here living it and getting it, y'all. Definitely. I love to see it. So Piera, shout out to my girl Piera. She actually made the Forest Black um, list, essentially. So she's actually part of the Forest Black community. And so for those who don't know, Forbes obviously is a name in and of itself. It's for powerhouses. It's for business people. It's for people that draw in, that have followers, that have leverage, that have investments, all these things. But you know, that show that they have an impact on the community. So you're not just on there because you feel like it <laughs> or because, you know, you've applied. You got to show that you actually make an impact. And so she got named to be a part of um, Force Black, especially here in Cleveland. But here's the thing. She not only got a chance to be a part of that, and I'm glad that she invited me to the, it was actually the Forbes Under 30 Summit. So they were hosting the summit, but then also showcasing all these different communities at the same time. She let me know we were in the room. We were able to be there. You know, she was able to get celebrated for being added on and all those things. She's there. She's doing all the great work. She then had to host um, actually a community event, essentially, to let people know more about Forrest Black, how they could be a part of it, all that. Um, apparently, Booby was there, y'all. He didn't, he didn't came out. He was there. I didn't even know he was in Cleveland, but apparently he came out for this. Um, this was all after the MGK performance. The mayor of Cleveland was there. Like, you got all these powerhouses. She did such a great job that she was actually named to be the chapter president, like, right on the spot. So, like, literally sworn in, <laughs> was able to, like, now take over 
over and now she's like officially the person in charge of that. So if y'all are interested in joining Forbes Black, being a part of this great community and being able to be amongst other powerhouses and people that are influential in that way, absolutely please feel encouraged to do it but you should definitely reach out to Pierre and if you don't have her contact information reach out to me I got you happy to make that connection so definitely there's been a lot there's been a lot of great great things that have been happening such awesome things and actually I just wrapped up also last night going to Best of Cleveland so for those who don't know Best of Cleveland happened yesterday it was wonderful it's awesome it's always awesome just to see people showcased in our city and again the great talent that we have but also seeing them being recognized and you know, be able to shine their lights. And so you got to see a lot of great people there. As a Latina, I was super happy to see Quisqueya La Bella. They actually made the list as well. So that's a Dominican restaurant on the west side of Cleveland. They had the whole dinner too, by the way, y'all. Like, you're able to give out like samples. They had like the rice and beans. They had like pollo. They had the stool. They had everything. And they had some empanadillas. So those are like moon pies with meat. They killed it. So they had all that. There was a lot of people there that, like I said, were able to get showcased. So it's just been incredible, incredible energy. However, well, actually not before, you know, before we completely segue, the other thing is this was also the month where we got to see Simone Biles, like completely take the world of Olympics by storm, become the most decorated gymnast. Like, I feel like I can't, you know, get tired of saying that enough. Like, come on now, Simone done killed it, came back 10 years later, has also had, but, and, and let's not forget, took the two year hiatus to focus on her mental health, which many people said she should not have done, or how dare you do that? Or how dare you take time off as if the people behind all these great accomplishments are not still humans who don't still have things going on, who don't still have life catch up with them. And it was the best thing she could do. I actually thought she took one year but it actually ended up being two years off and it was the best two years of her life y'all she literally not only took time for herself she not only came back stronger and able to literally take the olympic world by storm but also got married <laughs> she literally got married in the midst of this she found an incredible husband who also has been incredibly supportive has not felt like she is stealing a spotlight or that she's doing too much she's being her <laughs> she's being her she's being the amazing person that she is and he has been nothing but supportive i literally love seeing like the feedback that he gives her how he shows up for her while having an entire career because her husband by the way is Jonathan Owens okay so he's literally like on the Packers like he's he has his whole his own entire NFL career like the man is not like somebody just off the street or anything like that he's already incredible he already does his thing but he is did not feel at all intimidated to stand by his woman his wife and to celebrate her and what she has going on and how great that that makes them look together and I think that those are the best units much like Miss Tony Miller, who came on and talked to us about being one of the Latinas in STEM and engineer. She, but part of that, our episode on that was her celebrating her marriage to her husband and how supportive he's been and how great it was for him to take a chance on her. Some great people are able to get those great accomplishments. But then we had Elaine also wrap up our series and talk about how those are great to see, but there's also a lot of powerhouses who may not even be necessarily in relationships and they can also be successful and do all these great things. So it's wonderful, wonderful to see. I do love seeing it. And I can't shout out again enough those who are supportive to others who those are when we when we made the show and we talked about healthy relationships. That's what I feel like they should look like. <laughs> so definitely to Ray and Sarah Jakes. Absolutely. Simone Biles and Jonathan Owens. Absolutely. Not to be confused with Jonathan Majors, who, you know, that's actually the new partner of Megan Good. And, you know, that he uh, he has his own stuff going on. So that's not that's not who I'm talking about when I do talk about that. They may have their interesting relationship and have their things going on, but that's uh, absolutely separate. Because speaking of that, I love to see those supports. I love to see that happening. And I love to see people growing together, developing and absolutely evolving, you know, as human beings and whether they're in a relationship and whether they are not. What, of course, is incredibly tragic and something that it being October and for those who have been following me since the beginning, know that I'm definitely going to shed light on is that it is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Okay. And that, as y'all know, is something that is a very, is a cause that is very near and dear to my heart. I'm always, I'm never going to get tired, of course, right, of bringing more awareness to it, of talking about it and making sure we know about it. But what's what was incredibly hard, and it was also a loss that was faced by our city, for those who don't know, is that Amanda Williams, so she's, also, she's known on Instagram as Amanda the Stylist, 
she was an incredible, you know, hairstylist. She had her own salon. She knew a lot of people. She touched a lot of lives. Was this incredibly impactful, beautiful, I mean, just incredibly beautiful person. Unfortunately, though, I am talking about her in the past tense because she just recently passed away. The way that she passed away was at the hands of someone else who unfortunately shot her. She was in a relationship with this person. She had gotten into a domestic dispute. It ended with her life being taken. This is what I mean when I say that I know that we're having a lot of, you know, we touch on different things. We talk about all the things that we have going on. This is what I mean by when people say that they don't have time to entertain how much, you know, things that have to do with their mental health. When people say like, oh, that's something that I'll worry about later or that's a topic that I'll save for another day. This is what I mean by we can't afford to do that. We really can't. And the effects of these things are literally happening right in front of our faces, like literally right in front of our faces in our very communities. And it's happening to people that we know that we love. And then unfortunately, in some cases can no longer speak for themselves. Amanda is, and that's not even somebody that I know personally. I just, I can tell you that literally this woman has had such an effect though in our city that I didn't even know her personally, but I saw my entire timeline was filled though with individuals making posts about her. So even though I didn't even happen to know her, I knew at least 10 people that had a personal connection with her. And I'll tell y'all right now, I didn't even need to know her personally to feel heartbroken the day that I saw that news because you don't get into this line of work and want to help other people and not get touched by things like that happening. These are the kind of things that I'm always striving to fight against and to help avoid in some way, shape or form and hopefully prevent, you know, or at best educate on and bring more awareness to. But when you see a loss like that, there's no way you can't feel it. You know, there's no way you can't carry it. And there's no way that your heart doesn't go out to that person and to that family and to everybody that is now left behind and that is honestly shattered by something like this happening. And a lot of people, I'm sure, had no idea, right, that this was even taking place. She's literally going to the salon, making people look beautiful. She's already beautiful herself, but she's like doing people's hair for weddings, you know, for all these incredible events. And, and that's the other thing, too. Can we, uh, as we mentioned on the show with, when Tony came on, those who are in the beauty industry, those who are in the arts, those who are in all of these great things that contribute to people, those people are not celebrated enough, okay? Like, I am actually in the world of mental health, and I am literally going to school for it. But here's the thing. There, a lot of the clients that I'm going to get in the future are going to be people that actually know about mental health, actually want to do something about mental health, and are most likely going to seek me out for services, correct? Which is awesome. I love that. I love that there are people that have enough self-awareness, do enough research, and decide that, hey, if I want to do something about my mental health, I'm going to seek out a therapist, I'm going to make sure it's somebody I like, and let me get connected. That's amazing. However, how many people are struggling with mental health issues and are never going to set foot in an office, have no intentions of speaking to a licensed therapist and are never probably going to make that move in their lifetime? I'm sure we know them. You know, we may be them. And that is completely OK. I'm just saying that. But those are the same people that do go to get their hair done. Right. These are the same people that sometimes go out, get their nails done, do all these great things. And when they or do things to maintain themselves and when they're there, they engage in some very deep conversations. <laughs> Tattoo artists, I'm sure, have learned things about people that probably won't get shared in many other spaces. You're there for hours with this other individual. I'm sure you're going to get to know them, you know, as human beings. And that is what I saw in the post that people wrote about her. They're literally like, you, you care, you were with me through so many events in my life. You supported me through all these different decisions that I had to make. You were literally a part of all these milestones that I was able to achieve. How you're, it's just so it's crazy to even think about that you're no longer going to be there, that I am no longer going to be able to call you and that you're no longer going to be a member of my life. And so for any of those who are impacted by her loss or anyone like hers, I just want you to know, as always, as I have always reminded you, my heart absolutely goes out to you. And I want you to know that you are seen. There are there is a community out here for you. You do not have to suffer about that alone and you don't have to suffer about that in silence there are absolutely people that here that can help you that would like to be there with you and that honestly are grieving with you 
to be quite frankly, to be quite frank with you, because that is how I feel. I, I have not stopped thinking about it since. And that's why I feel even more empowered to want to let others know. Because again, as a reminder, domestic violence, <laughs> this is a thing that it, it does take place over time, you know, in different relationships that happen. But the people that are in them don't always know that they're in domestically violent relationships. They usually think that they're with people that they love. I just had a conversation today with someone who is struggling to figure out whether they should stay in a relationship with a person who they married, number one. So that's, I also don't want to make it seem like it's, it's a dating relationship because that's different, right? With dates, we tend to, you know, as soon as we see a red flag, we might leave. You know, some people stick around. But either way, there's, there's so much more choice there, right? You don't feel like you have to stay when you're not married, and, or you don't have something like that tying you together. Or if you don't have children with that person, you can walk away. You can walk away, you can choose to stay, but you don't have to be there. When there is a marriage, that's different. Of course, like usually we're taught, like you're you, usually that you don't get married just, you know, for no reason. Usually you commit to that. You want to stay with that person. You want to honor the commitment that you made before others and before that, before your partner. And so, of course, a lot of people stay in those relationships, they care about the person that they're with, but it's also easy for them to excuse the behavior of that person even when it is unhealthy. And so especially because, one, because they do want to make that relationship work, two, because they don't want to have, you know, live in a life without this person, you know, and three, because they don't, they haven't been taught to know what to look for and to know what unhealthy actually looks like and how to differentiate that from something else. They don't necessarily see those warning signs. The other thing is that when it comes to domestic violence, that's what I always want to be clear is that, yeah, the ultimate, the ultimate fear is someone losing their life in an unhealthy relationship. But there, it isn't what occurs right away. <laughs> there are so many other steps that take place before that. There are arguments that usually take place before, you know, with that person. Sometimes it's different exchanges that take place, insults that are exchange it is the way the person breaks the person down before this even you know gets to that point it's the way the person gets into that person's head you know and absolutely makes them feel less of themselves it's all of that breakdown that takes place well before a loss is even experienced so it's not necessarily like somebody that just jumps right into it we have heard unfortunately of others who have taken other people's lives for senseless reasons there are definitely many who have done that also and those people are not absent from this conversation either but the ones that I'm speaking of are those intimate partner relationships where people are dating that person where they share you know a lot of time with them and the ones that were exacerbated during times like the pandemic when people were living at home with other individuals and not having a chance to escape people who were facing more time with them and being reminded over and over again of what was, you know, of what not only what whatever their partner was having them do, but had no opportunity to share their time in any other hobbies or things like that. They, they literally had no escape physically, like to be able to leave their houses with a lot of people that were stuck at home with their abusers. But a lot of people also couldn't escape mentally. A lot of the things that they did to spend time or like to go to work, a lot of those things were taken away. A lot of us were forced to work from home, to be there and to spend time in this house, which for many was great if your house is a safe place and you love it. I mean, if you're like me after work, I can't wait to get home. You know, that's, a, that's something that I've set up for myself. But if home for you is with someone who is not healthy, imagine having to go home to that every single day and have no way to escape that and no other place that you could turn to and that was your every day your day-to-day -day and your reality at that time that was an incredibly difficult moment for everyone and now and unlike that in Amanda's case she on the other hand did have you know these great things and these great outlets but unfortunately found herself in a relationship that she did not know was going to lead to her demise did not know was going to lead to the end of her life. And I want to speak for people, you know, any individual like her, because it's not just women that it happens to, but any individual that finds themselves in that to not to absolutely please, you know, seek help in those things. Don't feel like it's got to be embarrassing. You know, don't feel like nobody's going to understand, you know, what it is or nobody's going to want to hear about that. Or I just got too many things right now to worry about for me to bring this up, you know, and that. I got too many other things that I need to accomplish first. I don't need to bring that up. Or if I admit that I'm in this situation, now people are going to know 
that I am dealing with this incredibly difficult thing. Even though I have all these other great things and successes, I want people to know about that. I don't want people to know about this other secret that I'm hiding and this other struggle that I'm facing. I don't want people to see me as weak and I don't want people to see me in a compromising situation. Please don't let that, those, those reasons, that guilt, or maybe that pride behind a situation or anything like that keep you from getting the help that you need, especially when it comes to situations of this kind. I would never want you to feel trapped in a situation in that way or just trapped on your own feeling like that and then not addressing that and then it leading to something greater or unfortunately something worse for you. I would never want that to be your reality. And so I just implore and hope that others hear that, you know, that we can absolutely uplift her name and all of those that we have lost to these incredible in these incredible ways and that as we continue to celebrate and all the great things that are happening that we don't forget that you know in the process because that's how it's felt for me I've been smiling so much <laughs> this month but then also feeling the weight of that at the same time and knowing that how the incredible dichotomy of that, that there are some people who are going home to celebrations and then there are some people going home to empty houses and people that they wish were still there and unfortunately are not. And I want to recognize that reality. I want to name it. I want to recognize it always and let you know that I understand that, that I, that I, or at least that I validate that and that that is why I would love for you to get any resources you need to now and always. And that is why I'm glad that we have months like October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, but always, you know, that we continue to have those conversations, especially while we're having a lot of violence in our world. There are, you know, don't want to get too much in the politics that are behind the Israel and Palestine conflict, but I will say that I know it's happening and I know that it's causing a lot of division amongst folks. And it's also something that weighs as a violence prevention advocate. It's not something that I haven't not been immersed in and haven't have not noticed was taking place but I'm noticing not just the conflict that is occurring I'm also noticing the parallels between this and events like 9-11 how there are people that are being scapegoated how there are the words terrorists and other things are being thrown around and just the incredible things that that is causing amongst people and I just think more than anything there, of course, are a lot of thoughts I have around how it occurred and all of those things, but my heart breaks most for all the losses that we're having and how instead of us all being united in our grief around that and how we might have family members that are there and they're in, in period, that even if we didn't have family members that are there, just the fact that there are people that are losing children, you know, that are losing precious, you know, mothers or fathers, like grandparents in this, in all these things that are happening, that instead of us being united in our grief, I'm seeing more debates about the division between the places where this is occurring, you know, about, you know, Zionism versus Ju Judaism and how, you know, it's Palestine versus Israel. No one is coming together and saying, let's just support one another during this time and just have those collective things. But it's more about whose side are you on and what are you showing support towards? And I think that that's unfortunately what happens with a lot of these conflicts, you know, and uh, there are a lot of countries that thrive off of that and that like to see that happen and, what you're always going to hear from me is that I want us to not always feed into that. I wish there were more ways for us not to be able to do that. I guess it's hard not to, though, when literally there are lives being lost, when there are literally targets on people's backs. I mean, I get that. So, like, I don't take that lightly. I just think that that's been the hard part for me to see as an outsider, because I will say that's not something that I'm going to pretend to seem like you know that I know what it's like to be an inside member of, of Israel or a Palestinian that is not the life I live I will say that I have seen a lot of parallels between Palestine and Puerto Rico for sure you know that there has been a lot that has taken place you know in different places and it's a lot of corruption that you know that we've gotten into here and that I see taking place in those places now but I will say that again it is just heartbreaking to see that that's what's taking place in our world now. And I feel like it's times like these where we need to come together more than ever, right? Support each other as much as we can and remind ourselves that as the human beings that we are, that we need one another, that we need encouragement, we need love, you know, and that we could all benefit from having that with each other and that we can use that to achieve whatever heights we can. And so that's why I salute to all the great women that I mentioned, all those who are, you know, having these great heights that they're, that they are reaching and that they are 
being able to experience. And I just hope that we can see more of that happen and, you know, join behind more of that. But again, do it from a collective and supportive lens. And so with that, <laughs> it's, uh, we will be touching more on domestic violence um, for sure, uh, just because that's how I started off <laughs> last year, if y'all recall. And we are coming up soon on our one year anniversary. So what's happening? I can't believe it's been a year <laughs> that I've actually done this, that y'all been rocking, that y'all actually. So if you still here, y'all some real ones, because it's definitely been a year of, you know, different events, different topics that we've been able to cover. So I'm super happy to know that you, you are still around. And if you are just getting to know, you know, what is Santana? says and all those great things well then I can definitely tell you you know I appreciate it I'm glad that you've joined and hopefully there'll be more that I can you know share with you as we go on but it'll definitely be about um, domestic violence we'll definitely be touching on some other things as a holidays approach um, but there will be a lot that we'll do and so please stay tuned as we do it thank you as always for supporting and tuning in and I uh, hope you have another great feel good Friday because we gonna do it again at that time thank you